Well, good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us on today's video cast for Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church. Today is Pentecost. Today is actually the birthday of the church. That is what we celebrate today. So happy birthday to the Christian church. There are a few announcements for today. Um, Weekday ministries, the daycare and pre-K program run right here at Mount Lebanon, is looking for a few new employees. We're looking to round out the staff because we're actually looking to add kids. We've got great demand, so we are looking for both full and part-time folks. If you know of anybody, or if you yourself are interested in any of these positions, please go ahead and get on our website and get the contact info for Medalise Ziegler. She is the wonderful director of our program, and just shoot her an email and let her know about the interest. As I mentioned, today is Pentecost, but it's also Graduation Sunday. We'll be having our confirmation class join the church at the 1045 service, and we'll have a brief reception immediately thereafter. Everyone is welcome to come and enjoy the very special service that we have planned for today. Also, news on a hiring note, Stephanie Lowe has rejoined our church as the new part-time youth director. If you'll remember, Stephanie was our interim youth director before Jim Lombardi came, but he has left and Stephanie has taken over his position. Uh, Her first start day was this past Monday, May 17th, so we hope you will all welcome Stephanie back with open arms. Also, Evensong for Aldersgate Day will take place tomorrow evening. That is at 7.30 p.m. in the main sanctuary. And Aldersgate Day commemorates the occasion of John Wesley and his feeling of having his heart strangely warmed when he finally felt that movement of God inside of his soul. That happened in London in 1738. So this will be a service of prayer and preaching and song and that'll, fuse, uh, that'll feature music and poetry by the Wesley family as sung by some of the members of our wonderful choir. The service will be live and open to the public, and it will also be live streamed on our Facebook page. So we welcome you to join that as well. Lastly, our two rummage sales this year have been combined into one uh, because, you know, COVID, of course, so our June one has been canceled, but the one that we are having this fall will be October 2nd, so pencil that day in on your calendars. We hope you will be able to join us for our annual rummage sale that so wonderfully benefits all the missions here at Mount Lebanon. There are some other announcements in the bulletins or on the webpage, so if you'd like to look at those, please feel free to go ahead. In the meantime, let's go ahead and start our worship service for the day.
rich in him Let the lost man say I am found in him Please join me for a time of prayer. Gracious God, as your spirit hovered over the waters 
and the darkness of the earth, you brought forth creation. Pour out your spirit to the ends of the earth, that your children may return from exile as citizens of your kingdom. Heal our divisions by your word of love and righteousness. Pentecostal God, you infuse us with your spirit, urging us to dream and to serve. May the gift of your presence find voice in our lives, that our babbling may be transformed into discernment, and the flickering of many tongues light an unquenchable fire of compassion and service to others. Heavenly Father, we pray today for those who are not here with us. We pray for those who are homebound or ill. We pray that their illnesses may be healed. We pray for those facing other problems and issues, whether financial or relational or spiritual. We pray that you may be with them, that you would comfort them, and show them that you are always there, ready and waiting to help. We ask that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit so that their lives would be transformed. Holy Father, you who raised Jesus from the tomb, you who gave life to the valley of dry bones, make the dry, bleached bones of our lives Live and breathe and grow again. Holy Spirit, blow through us. Turn the sin and sorrow within us into faith and power and delight. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, as we continue to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Fall down 
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. The word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. We are grateful that you are here watching with us this Sunday at the Mount Lebanon United Methodist Church videocast. We hope you've enjoyed today's service so far today, and we hope it's been uplifting for you. Well, it's Confirmation Sunday and Graduation Sunday, as I mentioned before. And this year, all of our eighth graders have been meeting in Sunday afternoon Zoom classes to learn more about their faith and more about the church. In March, they were actually joined by last year's class, which, of course, was suspended due to COVID. We should have gone on some field trips and retreats together and performed a special project for the church, but COVID. And I had mentioned to last year's confirmands that I would preach a special sermon to them come confirmation time. Now, last year when we had class in person, I would usually bring in some snacks for the class, some cookies, maybe some fruit, every once in a while something more substantial. But I remember a conversation last year's class where someone mentioned we should have waffles one morning, and someone else, who shall remain nameless, said, I wonder if you could do a sermon using waffles. So today is Confirmation Sunday. And my sermon title is Waffles. You know, I bet they all thought that I couldn't come up with a sermon using waffles because there's no mention of waffles anywhere in the Bible that I'm aware of. Pastor Tom, with his extensive years of study and preaching, might know, but, but I don't. Anyway, challenge accepted. I'm going to try and do a sermon using waffles. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about confirmation. Confirmation actually has several different meanings. We usually think of it in terms of science, like when you do an experiment to be sure of something. You might have tested a hypothesis, which is an idea that you have about something, about the way something works. Back in the 1990s, when I was in college, I had an older friend whose three-year-old son was already a scientist testing hypotheses. He got up very early one Saturday morning to watch cartoons while his parents were still in bed sleeping. People from my generation, Generation X, remember getting up Saturday mornings and watching cartoons and eating an entire box of cereal? Remember that? Anyway, after a while, the little boy started to get hungry for breakfast, so he went to the kitchen to see what there might be to eat, and he did indeed see some boxes of dry cereal. There was also some cold leftover oatmeal in the refrigerator. There was bread over by the toaster, and he wanted something warm for breakfast, but he knew he wasn't ever supposed to put anything in the toaster by himself. Then he remembered something, and he came up with a hypothesis that he wanted to test. Sometimes, when his parents allowed him to take a videotape out of the VCR, it felt warm. So he got an idea. He had a theory he wanted to confirm. Guess 
what he wanted to try. Actually, no, he didn't try waffles. But he probably wished he had some of those delicious waffles in his freezer. All he had, though, was toast and cereal, and he was in the mood for oatmeal. So he shoveled a few spoonfuls of cold oatmeal into the slot and waited. He pushed the eject button, but nothing popped out. Do you think his theory was confirmed? Was the VCR an effective oatmeal warmer? No. That's when he realized he was probably in trouble. So even though he was scared, he went down the hall to his parents' bedroom to test another theory. He guessed that if he begged for forgiveness, they would help him clean up his mess and that they would still love him. Do you think that theory was confirmed? Actually, it was. So how do we confirm the love that God has for us? How could we confirm a belief? Jesus said that God was his heavenly father. He's our heavenly father. And that God loves us no matter what, no matter how dumb we do things, no matter how badly we mess up our lives. But how could we ever confirm that? It's hard to come up with scientific proof of God's grace or of Jesus' love or about anything else when it comes to our faith. What we have instead are not tests of faith, like in science, but we have the Bible, which contains the stories or testimonies of faith. Testimonies are stories told by people about what happened to them, what they saw, what they heard, what they felt, and what they believed. Everyone has heard of Matthew. He wrote the first book of the New Testament, which is a book of testimonies about Jesus and the early church. Matthew's gospel tells the good news of Jesus. And one of those stories is where Jesus talks about doing what he told us to do because it would be the best foundation upon which to build our lives. In the scripture we just heard, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains fell, the floods came, the winds blew, but it didn't fall because it had been founded on the rock as opposed to the house of sand, which did fall. I was thinking that maybe we could test this hypothesis of Jesus here today. But what would we need to be able to do that? Rock and sand and things that we would need to build a house, and then we'd need something to be rain and floodwaters, and I'm pretty sure that Kirk and Alan and the rest of the trustees would frown upon floodwaters in our church. But then I thought, maybe if Jesus had frozen waffles, maybe he'd have used those as an example instead of sand, something you would not want to use as the foundation of your house. See? Kind of looks like a block, doesn't it? Pretty solid. It's frozen. What do you think? Would waffles build a good house? Well, we all know that waffles aren't as strong as rock, and they don't stay frozen. They get all soggy. Like sand, they kind of change with the weather. They wouldn't do so well if they got wet. Waffles are actually kind of flimsy. You know where the word waffle comes from, right? What it means? Like when a person waffles on a decision? Like, I couldn't decide between shorts and pants today, so I was waffling. And I waffled so long that I missed the bus. It's to be indecisive, to not be able to make up your mind. So we don't want our confirmands and graduates to waffle about their faith in God. We want them to be strong, like that rock. Like the waffles, we can't stand physically on the Bible. But what Jesus says is that we can stand confidently on what's inside the Bible, the promises of God. They are strong and firm, and they will stand up to any kind of weather. That's what Jesus promises. That's what we pray for our confirmands and our graduates today. They can't confirm their faith through science, but God can confirm their faith by making it stronger. Because we know that all their lives, 
their faith will be tested. We know this, older Christians do, from experience. Rain and winds of troubles will come and try and shake their beliefs. People will say that there is no God because you can't prove it. A little bit later in Matthew, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Now, I'm not saying that because the confirmants chose to be confirmed today that your family will become your enemy. Certainly not. On the contrary, your families wanted you to go through this process. What I am saying is that sometimes in your life, you'll meet people who won't necessarily be too happy with the fact that you're a Christian. Some won't care at all. Some will be openly hostile. But the Apostle Peter reminds us that we should always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Do this with gentleness and respect. Anybody can get angry if somebody else is angry with them. But we're not just anybody. We're Christians. We are sons and daughters of God. And as Christians, we are called not to answer anger with anger, but to answer anger with respect and love. So for my confirmants, and I call them mine because I was one of their teachers, but really they are all our confirmants. And for my graduates out there who are moving on to new chapters in their lives, I want to say this. And it's actually not me saying it, because honestly, my words wouldn't do it justice. It's the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans. And I've said before that the message isn't my favorite Bible translation, but for today, it works pretty well. Here's what Paul said to the Romans he was writing to. And I think it's good for you to hear as you go out into the world as new Christians. We are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. And each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were meant to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. So if you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate people. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, then keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to what's good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle to other people. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master. Be cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Instead, pray even harder. Help needy Christians and be inventive in that hospitality. Bless your enemies. Don't curse at them under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're laughing. 
Share tears with your friends when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. To the confirmants and graduates, family, friends, and our whole church today, I say this. They need us to pray for them today, for their confirmation, for their graduation. We pray that God will keep their faith rock-solid strong, like a good foundation for their whole life, not like a frozen waffle. We're praying on this Pentecost and graduation day for the Holy Spirit to come into their lives with power so that God will never let their faith falter. Jesus made a promise at the very end of Matthew's gospel. We are praying for Jesus to keep his promise today. Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. In closing, when Douglas MacArthur was stationed in Australia during World War II, he wrote a prayer for his son, Arthur. This prayer for the confirmands is based on that prayer. So please pray with me. Lord, let us have children who are strong enough to know when they are weak and brave enough to face themselves when they are afraid. Children who will be unbending in defeat, but humble and gentle in victory. Let us have children whose wishes will not take the place of deeds. Let us have children who will know Thee, Lord. Father, lead our children not in the paths of ease and comfort, but under the stress of difficulties and challenge. Let them learn to stand up in the storms of life. Let them learn compassion for those who fail. Lord, let us have children whose hearts will be clear and whose goals will be high. Children who will learn to master themselves before they seek to master anything else. Children who will reach into the future but never forget the past. Father, let them more and more be like your son Jesus every day of their lives so that they may serve you and others with love and compassion. And after all these things, Heavenly Father, add senses of humor, so that they may always be serious, but never take themselves too seriously. Give them humility, that they may always remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of wisdom, and the strength of weakness. Amen. Thank you.
Please join me for the offering prayer. Loving God, you are the Lord of all. Only you can send your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty and in times of joy and peace. We are grateful that you are continually at work in our lives and in the world to fulfill your promises. May our giving today show our trust in you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as always, the ministries of this church still go on, even though some of us still aren't in church. So we would prayerfully ask that you remember your tithes and offerings. You could always mail in your check to the office. That's at 3319 West Liberty Avenue, Pittsburgh, 15216. Or you could go to our website at www.mlumc.org and donate electronically. Either way, we are very blessed by your generosity.
Please join me now for the benediction. Go out into God's world filled with the spark of the Holy Spirit. Spread the peace of Christ and remind everyone that you meet that each one is a beloved child of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.